这里是厨房，所以我们。The ultimate responsibility of a designer is to make people's lives better while achieving business results. To do this, it must start with learning about what matters to people. Much like archaeologists, we never know what we're looking for at the beginning. However, by slowly uncovering pieces of evidence, meaningful patterns start to emerge. And eventually, we unearth something significant. Because um, we are just fascinated by the differences of people, as the world that we get exposed to become much more complex, people start to develop the logic and preferences on different things. Maybe because their family background, because education, or different social norms, or the lesson learned in their lives. Then our value system begin to form, and perceptions begin to develop. Our values and the way we perceive things influence our decision making in everything we do, and that's especially evident in situations when perception is the main thing you would lean on, like when you're in a store, for example, and you need to pick out a bottle of wine, and you look at all those shelves. What crosses your mind at that moment? Or when you're at home and you pick out the clothes you're gonna wear today, what do they mean to you? And what do you want them to mean to other people? So every observable behavior and every articulated reason is a piece of a clue, and we pick out those meaningful signals and we distill them into a rich understanding of what's important to people and how they see the world. Um, there are some cases, and perhaps many more cases than we assume, in which the fundamental assumptions that companies are making actually are quite off. The fundamental concept frameworks in which products are developed are really quite off. Um, we could spend all day at the whiteboard. We could have as many post-its as we like. Um, but in the end, there are some assumptions and value systems and meaning systems that are so counterintuitive that unless we go into the world of our possible informants or consumers, um, we would never know to question. When we observe and talk to people, we collect a rich, almost overwhelming amount of information. However, the most valuable part of what we do is actually to identify the meaningful signals and figuring out how to piece them back together. The interpretation process is actually highly organized messiness. That's quite deliberate for us, so we don't let our early assumptions hold us back. There's a saying by Henry Ford: um, If I had asked people what they wanted, they would have told me faster horses. And that clearly illustrates why we never base our answers solely on what we hear or what we observe, because the information that we gather from the field are merely signals that require interpreting. The result of that interpretation ladder up to a high level of values that we then leverage to understand the consumer's logic systematically. Design is really comprised of two parts. It's the decoding of signals. And the designer has a really unique role in that they have hypersensitive intuition about decoding uh, the meaning of things. They know that only when you understand what's truly meaningful to someone deep down inside can you translate that into an offering that people will find valuable. This is what designers do instinctively. The traditional thinking is that designers dress up or give form to an object. That's a very narrow perspective and is detrimental to businesses that intend to innovate. It is highly critical that you involve designers in the front-end discovery process because they're some of your most divergent thinkers in your organization. What is my job at Continuum? 
Um, at Continuum, our job is to internalize the meanings behind the signals. Then through our design sensibilities, we build emotional triggers into things like um, store identities, technology features, um, product segmentations, even things like fragrant experiences. In the end, what each of these does is send the appropriate signals to the subconscious mind. I really believe that in the future, the companies that best design for the invisible mind will be the ones that own the hearts and minds and the wallets of the consumers. <laughs>